Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I'm reviewing Series from Artipia Games. Series is a 1 to 4 player worker placement game with a twist from Artipia Games. This is currently on Kickstarter, I'll have a link to it down below. And everything you see here are rules, components, all that stuff, subject to change, like the board has a sheen in it, just all that stuff. Prototype, so not a final copy. Series, like I said already, is a worker placement game with a twist. And the twist in this particular game is that you're often placing your workers. You're going to have your own little workers over here, which are flying across the board right now. If you own little workers, you're going to be placing down on various worker placement zones on the board. You can follow these little circles you have over here. Or alternatively, you'll be pulling back workers in order to activate your own building. So you have this aspect of a common pool of workers where you're going to be pulling them back to activate stuff or placing your own workers in order to get abilities in the game. This is not going to be a full rules overview. There's a lot of things kind of all interweaving. I'll go over most of the core components that you have to understand to play this one. The game is going to play across three rounds. And every single round, you're going to be taking actions. Well, first, you're going to go ahead and generate income. You're going to have your buildings over here going to be generating income on your buildings. Every single round, you have the opportunity to buy more buildings that will get more income generated every round, as well as the asteroids. Once you have your own asteroids down in various spots, and you control of asteroids over here, you'll be generating more income from that. So you can have all these various resources being generated in each of the three rounds. And then from there, you go into the worker placement aspect. On your turn, you're going to go ahead and take an action. The actions vary to a degree, but you can either go ahead and place out workers on specific spots. We'll cover those spots uh, shortly, but you know, you can go over here and do this zone or over here and do this zone. Again, we'll come back to what the actions are, but you basically place down a token to take an action. You'll also have various other ways that you can take bonus actions. We haven't heavily caught, we haven't gotten to it yet, but there's gonna be things like getting influence in the council over here. Uh, there's gonna be different actions you can take from this spot over here. There's gonna be always little tips and tricks as how you can take different actions. Alternatively, you can also go ahead and take back a worker. When you take back a worker, you basically go ahead and take one of these workers over here, not your own little disc that you just put out, but rather one of these discs over here, one of these people, you're going to take back one of these and then activate a building of that color, putting it onto your own little grid, activating that building and every bonus underneath it. So for example, over here, you'll be able to go ahead and get that resource. You can pay an ice to get an additional, and then you can take this action over here. That's the common structure of these cards. You have your research generation at the top, and then you have over here what actions you take when you activate it, possibly paying ice to take larger actions. Again, we've talked about these cards over here, where you'll have the opportunity to gather these. These are going to be able to go onto their own spots next to the board, and then alternatively, you can also slot cards underneath them in order to be able to take stronger actions, being able to get more benefits, but not the resource production. We'll come back to that over there. That's the core cycle you're going to do. You're going to go ahead and take actions by either placing a worker out or pulling back one of the workers and activating your own little uh, generation of, of resources and actions from the board. You're going to repeat that until the end of the round, until the end of the full cycle, and then repeat that two more times for three rounds, and that's the game. As far as some of the general elements going on, again, we're not going to cover every little aspect here, but as far as the areas you can go on the board, let's just take over here. Up here, you're going to have these cards you can go ahead and gather. These are primarily going to be worth points, so you're paying into these large point cards. You're going to have these little uh, colonies or uh, ships over here. We can go ahead and do various resource conversion engines. You're going to place a person here. You'll be able to activate those. You have over here, no, over here, the Contractors Association. This is going to be a way to pay in credits to take additional actions. All these symbols will be covered in other areas we go through, but it's another way of getting to various spots you might otherwise be able to get to. So you can see many of these symbols are going to be present in different areas, including your own little personal board over here, as well as over here, different opportunities for different, like, you know, creating different types of resources in the game. Over here in the construction yard, you'll have the opportunity to gather more buildings. You're going to pay in the resources shown in the top left corner, and you're going to add this card to your own personal tableau. And like I mentioned already, you have the opportunity, first of all, it's going to generate resources every single round, but additionally, you can slot cards underneath it so that when you pull back a blue worker, only the top color matters, when you pull back a blue worker, you'll have a stronger activation. So you have these ways where you're building out little constructions or worth of cards over there as you get add more to your research generation, as well as adding to the actions you take when you pull back a worker from the board. You're going to have this area over here. This area here is one of the things you're going to be doing in the game is going to be activating various things using the core actions you have over here, as well as gathering more actions here. But you'll have the opportunity to develop your tableau of research programs over here, which will improve the various actions you're taking. So you're going to have these different actions over here, the launch complex over here, you're going to have the construction yard over here, and then the docking bay over here. And so you have all these little actions, you're going to be improving the tableau as you go through them, improving what you get when you move up over here on these tracks, or alternatively taking extra bonus actions as you slowly pay the resource costs, moving up there, as well as getting more points for those. So this is going to be your own little research tableau you're going through. Contract Association, like I mentioned already, will give you the opportunity to pay in credits to take those actions again, and the AMA Council over here will give you the opportunity to spend in 
influence. There can be various ways you get influence, uh, such as paying to build some of these cards. You're going to get influence over here, this spot over here. Whenever you take a docking bay action, you'll get influence there. So there's going to be different ways you gather influence over here, and you can trade them in in order to go ahead and take extra actions from the symbols over here. That's the core aspect of what you're doing over here. The main idea is you're trying to get as many points as possible. There's a few ways you can try to build up your point engines from the various cards you're going to be building, from the upgrade you're going to be doing in the research programs, from these cards you're going to be gathering over here. There's a lot of ways you can get those extra points from the uh, the, 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 the the asteroid field over here as you gather different uh, area control over those asteroids over there. And you're all trying to do this while generating as many resources as possible in the game. Every single round, you're also going to be rotating this asteroid field. It's one of those things where the asteroid is going to be rotating every round, but then additionally, you're going to rotate the inner circle with the asteroid, but the asteroid inner circle is going to rotate again, and then the inner circle is going to rotate again. This matters because you're trying to get to various spots on the board, but you also have to pay ice. Ice is generally a currency used to get extra distance or extra actions in the game. In this case, you're going to be spending ice to get further and further into the asteroid field, so trying to time how this is slowly moving and rotating and where you're trying to get in that field is going to be an important part of the game as you figure out where to launch things off, where to launch your own little satellites into that field over there to generate those resources as you build it up. That's the core idea of what you're doing in series. Three rounds of the game, you're going to be rotating the asteroid every single round, you're going to be generating resources every single round, and you're going to be alternating placing your own people out in order to take action versus pulling people back in order to activate your cards. And the way you try to combine everything, the way you try to build out your tableau, the way you try to improve your research programs or gather more cards to build it out, all of that's going to determine your own unique engine and how you strive towards a pathway forward in series. Which brings us to the review starting off with Ease of Play. Ease of Play is... The game itself is actually fairly easy to teach. It's a worker placement game. If you're used to worker placement games, this is not that complicated. The rulebook I have was a prototype rulebook and not the clearest as far as the structure. I hope it'll be improved upon in the final version, but I also did get a guided walkthrough and teach, which helped me get through it. But I don't think the actual core game, once I got up and running from it, it was fairly easy to teach to my group and get ourselves up and running. It's worker placement with a small twist, but there's nothing crazy you haven't seen before. It's tableau building, it's placing workers to gather things, it's pulling back workers. The way it combines different things is interesting and well done, but the core elements here, I don't know if there's anything here that is, I don't mean this in a negative way, I don't know if there's anything here that is uh, harder to explain or game-breakingly difficult, it's just a lot of things thrown together in a very interesting way. Uh, as far as playtime, it comes in roughly 90 minutes, first play can run a little long, but roughly 90 minutes for the experience, although it also might vary based on player count. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, the biggest thing here, the biggest thing that's compelling about series is the, uh, the way it combines things that are similar to give you a different engine. And primarily that's going to be in the dual placing and pulling workers in the game. See, in general, in worker placement games, the whole puzzle of it is trying to figure out where you want to go, where you're going to place something, and trying to be mindful of the fact, and these blockers over here, because I have it set up as a two-player game, and these are going to block some of the zones over here. But that puzzle in worker placement games are trying to figure out where do you want to go, and what's likely to get blocked off first is a big part of the, of the game whenever you're playing these. You're trying to figure out, okay, great, I want to go here, and I want to go here, but you might go there first, and I have to be mindful that they might get there first, and the series throws an additional twist into the mix with the fact that you're going to have these pools of workers that you're pulling back to activate your cards, and the color of those workers does matter in terms of what they're going to activate. And these are not always going to be the same in trying to plan around what's going to come out or trying to make sure you're evenly distributed across only three rounds of play means you're trying to figure out what you're trying to go for. What makes the most sense? What do you have to pull back? What do you? Where are you trying to place? Trying to balance all the things you're trying to do in the game, and it can absolutely be brutal as you go through it in a good way. Brutal in a good way, although with caveats. If there's not enough workers, if you only have a single blue worker in the pool that round, and you're trying to activate your cards, you have to try to puzzle out which of the things you have to do in what order, whether you're going to try to upgrade your abilities, upgrade your tableau, which spots you need to get to, or are you going to pull that blue worker before it's too late? That dual worker placement element is the biggest thing that is interesting in the game. Combine that with the fact that you have general tableau building. You are pulling and building up more buildings, you're upgrading those actions, you're going to have your research programs over here, which are going to give you different ways to augment and improve your actions. You're going to constantly have tight competition over the asteroid belt of trying to figure out how you're going to get those resources coming in. There's only three rounds of play, you have to get your engine up and running as fast as possible and everything intermingles nicely as far as giving you different ways to get things done. That's a big part of the game. There's not, there's rarely one way to do something. Some spots have limited actions, but there's almost always a different way to get somewhere in the game. If you're stuck out of the docking bay over here, well, you have an opportunity to spend an influence and take that action over there. You're going to have your own core actions you're going to be building out, as well as these unique actions that are going to give you more ways to do things, and there's almost always a way to get that extra action to try to figure out 
what it is. Ironically, even though worker placement is more the core, pulling back workers is where I find things a little tighter because most of the time you can always find some sort of side way. It might not be the way you want it, it might not be the way you planned, but there's often multiple ways to get two different actions in the game, not just the general overarching puzzle of what you're trying to do, but even just the general specific actions. There are multiple pathways forward, multiple ways to get things done in series. But I think for me the core is that place and pull of the workers as far as the, the puzzle that series provides. As far as what I don't like in the game, first of all, three rounds does make it feel a bit tight. You're building up a tableau to some degree. You're trying to improve your actions over here. You're trying to gather more, more asteroid belts over here, build up more locations in order to get more resources in. But across only three rounds of play, that doesn't give you a lot of satisfaction as far as how well you built up your tableau. Make no mistake, there's a lot you get done in series and a lot of things are happening in those three rounds. But for a game that has a degree of building out a production engine, building out the more stuff you get, with only three rounds of play, there's just not a ton of time to see that develop, which can be a little frustrating for someone like myself that likes to see likes to see the things you're building really develop into a lot more of an engine. Additionally, the game is very much an optimization puzzle, as opposed to giving you a lot of variability as far as why you dive in every single time. The main variability in series comes from the fact that you're just, the way the cards are going to come out every single game, uh, or maybe perhaps the way the asteroid belt is rotated. You know, small things like that, but the, the cards don't feel drastically different. They're not like a set of cards where it's like every game is going to feel different. They're almost incidental in terms of the combination of different things they cost, provide, the color of the card, but they don't feel it doesn't feel like a different game when you dive into it and different cards come out. So there's very low variability to the actual experience. It's more about optimizing. Multiple plays is more about optimizing how you're going to approach those three rounds of play and how you're going to try to optimize your engine. And yes, the other players at the table do keep that variability fresh because they are competing for things, but the core puzzle itself isn't really that different game to game. As far as what I can see others not liking, First of all, that common pool of workers is very tense, but less so on the actions themselves. I mentioned already the fact that when you're pulling these workers back, you're often vying for a specific color to get your thing done, and while initially it might seem, hey, there's three greens in the pool, what's the big deal? But as those start to deplete, you very quickly are trying to figure out when you can afford to wait, how long can you afford to wait, and what you're trying to do to pull that required worker back. But many of the other actions, as I mentioned already, aren't as tense. Very often, if you're trying to go to somewhere, it's not that big a deal because there are different ways to get things done. That's both a pro and and a con. It's a pro because there are multiple ways to achieve your goals. It's a con because in a game that has worker placement as the core mechanic, sometimes I don't really care if I go to the construction yard now because I'll always have the opportunity to do so later through some other means of getting there. Secondly, the game can be frustrating to build out an engine. This goes back to the three rounds of play. It can be frustrating to try to build out an engine and just never have the opportunity to actually get the workers you need to place back on your spots. If there's only three rounds of play and those, those red workers just don't show up, you might only activate that card combo you built once the entire game, which doesn't that rewarding for a game where you are trying to build out certain things to improve your tableau in the game. As far as final thoughts on series, I like the game a lot in some ways while being less enthralled in others. I like, I really like the concept of what they're doing with the placing and pulling workers back. It manages to feel fresh in terms of the way the game comes together without actually feeling without actually feeling like there's anything new. I can't point to a single thing in series that's really new, that's really different, which is fine. That doesn't need to have something new in a game. But the way it combines things really does work well. The card combinations, the pulling back workers, the placing workers, there is a fun, tight, economical puzzle here. For me, the main things that hold it back are the things I touched upon already. The fact that there's only three rounds of play means you are a little bit more limited in how, how much fun you could have with the tableau that you're building, and then the fact that the game does have low variability game to game, making it much more of just an optimization puzzle as opposed to an actual interest in exploring the other parts or facets of the game that I didn't get to see. For me, overall, this is a 3.5 out of 5. I like it a lot. I'm very curious to see. I'm very curious to see what else can be done with this, or even just with the puzzle that's being done here. While in some areas the game, in some areas the game is very much for me, and in some areas it's a little bit more of a tighter puzzle that is less to my personal appeal. As far as other game recommendations, first of all, there's going to be Beyond the Sun. If you're looking for another worker placement space-based game, very different than what it does, giving you a lot of just research. If you just if you like the research program aspect of the game, if you like tableau building and just building up a better engine, highly recommend Beyond the Sun from your Gander Games, fantastic little worker placement puzzle, and then a game that gave me similar vibes to the series, it's been quite some time since I played it, but Venice from the Turtle Vitalis Erda is a ver another very tight worker placement game, six rounds of play over there, but everything is very tight as you struggle and strive to get your engine up and running across six, round of play, six rounds of play and building out the perfect vineyard. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.